All right, chip of the day. We have a NPN switching transistor. Um, interesting they call it a switching transistor. Uh, I usually call these small signal transistors, but yeah. It is a PZT2222A. And you go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, 2222A, isn't that a, a 2N2222A? Well, it is, except it's a PZT version, uh, which is this weird uh, surface mount package. Okay, this is called an SOT223. And uh, let me grab one here, uh, tiny little guy. And uh, yeah, so yeah, 2N2222 transistors are very old now, 1960s, I think. Um, but they're like one of the most popular transistors ever, one of the most recognizable transistors like ever. Um, so what did they look like back in the old days? Well, they looked like this, okay? And it's a metal can, and uh, can I zoom down a little bit? Uh, it's a metal can, three legs. Um, this is what's called a TO18, TO18. And it's a metal can, and uh, so it has uh, a bit of heat sinking capability made it made out of metal, okay? You can also get uh, these transistors in what's called a TO92. A TO92 is a plastic version of the TO18, okay? And obviously plastic doesn't conduct as much heat as metal, and so it wouldn't have as much uh, wattage. Um, but uh, TO18, okay. The family doesn't stop there though. Um, let me get out some tweezers here. Uh, you could also get it, that transistor in that package, which is an SOT23. And um, it is a 2N2222 also. So you can get the same chip put in different packages and they have different uh, sometimes they have different part numbers, sometimes they don't. So these would have the exact same part number. Even the SOT23, I think, has the same part number. I think they would all just be called uh, 2N2222, and then you would have to specify which package type you want. Um, now, this particular one, I don't think there's a data sheet that says 2N2222A that has, oh, you can get it in an SOT223, uh, a lot of twos today. Um, but anyway, uh, so there it is. I've never actually had one of these before. I found it in a grab bag at the store and I got a bunch of them. So yeah, let's uh, take a look at this little guy here and compare him with maybe some of these other ones here. Maybe not that one, because I don't want to solder him up. Um, so I've taken this guy here and I've put some leads on him. Okay, so soldering them down so we can at least put it in a uh, transistor tester. So let's do that. All right, so let's put on our new part and test it. And it says it's an NPN, HFE of 187, uh, VBE of 0.7 volts, and uh, tested at 4.7 milliamps. All right, so 187 for that one. Let's put in a uh, an oldie moldy. This is actually from an HP stockroom uh, from the way back days. NPN 161, a little bit lower, not bad. VBE of 0.67 volts and a test frequency, a test to the current of 7.4 as before. Let's put in the plastic version, the TO92 version. All right, put him in. And did I get him in there right? Yeah, I think I did. HFE of 155, even a little bit lower, VBE of 0.68, and a test current of 7.4 milliamps as before. So there you go. Um, yeah, the newer one has a little bit higher HFE, which I would have expected. Things just keep getting better with age. Um, 187. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of these on the curve tracer. People like the curve tracer. All right, there we go. This is the uh, PZT uh, model. And uh, so we have two volts per division. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 volts. 
and we have a 10 milliamps per division of the upper, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 milliamps going up. And uh, so, yeah, this looks, this looks really, really, really nice. Um, let's go ahead and put in a, uh, the old one. Here's the, the old metal can TO-18. Uh, and it's, it's uh, HFE is a little lower, so it's uh, squashed in the vertical direction just a tiny bit. But yeah, it looks uh, basically the same. Now, this curve tracer, I've got a switch and I can flip between the two. So this is the PZT and the old one. PZT, old one. So yeah, they're pretty much, they're pretty much the same. Um, so let's take the old one and uh, we'll run it up. And then if you go just a little too far in voltage, you'll see, see the, uh, uh, transistors start to break down and so it's happening here at the upper upper traces at about uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, about just over 12 volts it starts to break down. Let's go to the PZT and we'll take it up and that starts to break down right about the same spot. So yeah it's basically the same die, right? <laughs> it's basically the same thing. They just put it in different packages. Uh, let's see here for complete list, let, completeness. Let's uh, put in the uh, TO92 package. Let's see here. I need to put it in over on this socket here. All right, so here is the uh, PZT. And I'll flip it over to the uh, TO92, and you can see that it's breaking down quite quickly. Let me make sure I've got it in the socket, right? Yeah, it looks like it. So uh, this particular one is breaking down much faster. So I don't know if this is a, a real 222. Is it a clone? Uh, it's marked 2N2222, or maybe it's just... The data sheet says this, and most of them go fa farther than the data sheet, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, two, four, yeah, this is really breaking down quite quickly. I don't quite understand that. Let's take a look at the data sheet. Maximum of 600 milliamps, low voltage, uh, 40 volt breakdown, collector to emitter. Um, we have uh, 1.15 watts, but you have to read the fine print. Uh, you have to have a one square centimeter copper pad soldered to the uh, tab in order to get uh, any type of wattage. Uh, we have a 150 milliamp test current, VCE of 10 volts. They're getting Minimum of 100, uh, a beta of 100, and a maximum of 300. So we were testing, what, 187, something like that. Um, so it's doing okay there. Um, yeah, let's see if it has any, uh, no test curves in this particular data sheet. But I'm sure you can find them on other 2N2222s. All right, there you go, chip of the day. Uh, kind of a modern version of an old part, uh, PZT2222A.